What's up, YouTube? Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Um, all my new subscribers, woo. This particular segment is about getting to know Tim Rexis from Rexis Nutrition. And what you're gonna learn is what drives Tim and how he got started on this amazing journey. You're also gonna learn a few trials and tribulations that he himself has had to endure and work through, not only by himself, but also with the help of loved ones. I hope you guys enjoy this. Tim, thank you so much for taking the time to do this with me. I do appreciate that. And if you guys have any um, questions or comments, post them down <laughs> in the comment section. Um, make sure that you subscribe and also give a big thumbs up. You guys enjoy and thank you. Okay, just wanted to say uh, thank you guys so much for coming, tuning in to uh, um, Cindy Loves Cool Things and the extension of BS No Excuse. And today, like I said, I get to uh, meet with the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> <laughs> Tim Rexes with Rexes Nutrition. Um, thank you so much. Absolutely, for thanks for having me. I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Absolutely. So, okay, um, first and foremost, for our people out there, tell us a little bit about you. Uh, my name is Tim Rexius. I am the president and CEO of Rexius Nutrition, Rexius Franchising, and co-owner of Iron Heaven Gym. Uh, from Norfolk, Nebraska, 37 years old, five kids. Yes, uh -huh. five. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Z and I were touched up yeah. on that in the last one. Yeah, that's like, it, it's busy with my beautiful wife Brittany, who yes. is also originally from Omaha as well, um, and uh, been down here about eight and a half years. Started okay. Rexius Nutrition eight years ago. Where did you come from? I lived in Sioux Falls, South Dakota for seven years I was after college. I went to Wayne State College here in Wayne, Nebraska, oh, and then cool. moved to Sioux Falls and ran a company up there, and then uh, moved back down here to start Rexius in 2010, and started August 1st, 2010, so seven and a half years ago. Why? Was this like, was this, this like this, your dream? This or? was, uh, Rexius Nutrition was my business plan in college, actually, for my business, my bachelor's degree, and I got a D on it three times. So but he kept say, going, guys. I kept going. So <laughs> I was 23, and I, I couldn't get financing because I didn't have any assets. And uh, you know, my my parents, God bless them, they're like, "You got to figure it out on your own if you're gonna be an entrepreneur." So you need to go earn it. So I got a great job with Mid American Research based out of Nebraska here. They're in uh, 40 states. Great company. Uh, learned a ton. Learned how to sell 100% commission. And then I am traveling uh, several states a year, 80,000 miles a year in a car. Really learned how to hustle. Uh, but I had a passion for this, and I got really out of shape. I got hurt, uh, hurt my shoulder, and so I didn't work out for a couple of years. And How all did of a sudden, you hurt? Uh, well, football, college football, college track, trying out. I, I loved it, but uh, I, all of a sudden here I was, 28 years old, 330 pounds, 35, 36% body fat. Wait a minute, how tall are you? I'm six one and a half, six two. Um, so I went from being really big and in shape to really, really fat. Uh, to be no, no uh, sugar coating at all, uh, and. Uh, that's what I like about it. It was actually it was after my it was after my ten year reunion uh, for high school and somebody put a picture on Facebook because when I first got Facebook, you know. Um, and uh, I hate those I'm pictures. like and I saw a picture, I go, Oh my. I mean some who's the large gentleman that ate me that looks just <laughs> like me? And uh, I literally I've said I'm done and I lost I lost sixty, seventy pounds, probably six months, and then I kinda got the passion back for doing this. And so as I'm losing the weight, I'm you know, uh, I'm shopping around all the stores that are around. You know, mm -hmm. and and I'm like, God, everybody makes their own line of garbage there, and it's and I so I started buying it online. I didn't want to get some commission salesman sell me a bunch of garbage I didn't need to because it was annoying. You know, like I know what I'm doing. I'm just You've I may look out of I may look out of shape, but I've been in shape, so I kind of know what I'm doing. And if I did ask with some young kid who was just being told the script, or you go to some store where somebody's worse shape than I am trying to sell it to me, and so then you go online, yeah. right? And then it shows up and it's already expired. Or you can tell it's been on the warehouse shelf for eight months, so the, the, the oh. protein bars are rock hard. And then you're basically reading reviews from products, but you just kind of know when you're reading it that somebody who works there was paid to write it, so you don't trust any of it. And I'm like, listen, I want internet prices, and I want you know I want the, the plethora of all these brands I can look at that I read in the magazines that you see other people using, uh, but I want it today. <laughs> so I don't want to wait for it to get shipped, but I also want to talk to somebody that has actually used it. That's not getting right. paid to tell me a story. And so I'm like, this kind of described my business model. I had my business plan in college. I'm like, you know what? I better do this now before I'm too old and not brave enough to, just crazy enough to cut my salary by 80%, cash in every single thing I own, 
I sold everything I owned on Craigslist or eBay, so much that my two younger kids at the time thought that they were going to be sold next. Because I mean, oh, I sold literally. everything, the weight equipment, everything I owned. I just learned to hustle it and put it all into this, no safety net. And uh, so, here. did you at this point in time have a significant other? I had. It's my. I had. I was married at the time to my ex-wife. She was uh, not a fan of doing this, uh, but we all. It was a rough uh, time at the say the least. But I, I just. In my faith, I actually got the vision to do this. Uh, mm-hmm. To really kind of can re- commit back to this business model when I was actually at a Christian com- conference, and I just uh, thought it was a message from up top. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing it. I mean, it just and I went all in. I just you know. and so I, I will tell you that Shane Yeager, my business partner, who actually we worked together at GNC in college, eight years previously. I met him when I just first moved down here, and uh-huh. we met up again at. at uh, used to be Gold's Gym here in town. I said, hey, I got this really crazy idea. And Shane knows me. He's like, I'm down. So Shane jumped in, uh, first wow. employed, and he bought into the company three months later. And uh, I was just, I mean, as I was telling her this last Friday, we had the biggest sales day in Rex's nutrition history yes. across all stores. And this store alone here at 120th and Center, which is like the back of a little mini warehouse back here, um, did more sales on Friday than we did in our entire first month or actually our first four months. So, like, if we only sold, a, you know, I think a couple thousand dollars our first couple months and half of it was bought by Shane and I for ourselves <laughs> to give to our friends to try to talk him into coming here. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, uh, then the rest is history. We've had 16 locations in five states. We're expanding into three more states this year. So um, how would somebody get into that? Honestly, you know, if you go to our website, registration.com, click on franchising, it goes through some of the videos and stuff. We actually, I'm, we're really up front with, them, with, with our numbers. We just say, hey, here's what it costs to start Arexius. And here's what it costs to, to start five other companies in the nutrition field, and you look for yourself. You can start probably three or four Rexia stores for the cost of one of my competitors. And I did it for a very specific reason. One, I'd rather have a good financial relationship with uh, a business partner. Whereas I look at our franchisees, we're, we're business partners. If you're mm-hmm. not successful, I'm not successful. So exactly. a good, honest, low royalty for the next 20 or 30 years for a business you pass off to your kids for a business that my kids take over hopefully someday, uh, then you know, take anybody with just enough money, and that, that gets where a lot of them uh, change. I wanted to make sure that we kept it low so that I can get the hustlers like me at 23 that didn't have the money, that didn't have the parents or a rich family member to co-sign a loan, and I wanted to make sure that people People who were hungry. People who were hungry, because I was hungry yeah. at 23, and I got re-hungry at 28, 29 when I did this, and thank God that a lot of people get stuck. They get stuck into a, a job and then a mortgage and cars, and all of a sudden yeah. they're just too risky, and I want to make sure that I can take these... 20-something kids and, uh, you know, that, that have a hunger for doing this and give them a path to doing it without having to break the bank or having to have their parents co-sign a huge loan. And, right. And, so we, and that's why I think our model for success is that uh, I, we didn't go greedy. We just uh, stayed, you know, good, honest amounts, and we just have a problem with it. So if you want to get into a Rex's nutrition, you basically just got to contact us. I, I'm not against going anywhere. You know, we've paid the work with the, the lawyers and the and the and the accountants to get registered in the states that we have to get registered in. We have somebody contact just in North Carolina, so we're looking there. Nice. Just agreed to a store on Saturday for, for Dallas, Texas. Texas, we're coming. Um, and, you know, <laughs> we just agreed to a pre- prospect for Phoenix. Um, we agreed to a possible second location out in Colorado. And uh, Wow. So it, it's just, and I said, I told the guys, like, you against the one in Texas? No, I'm not, I don't care where it's at. Rexy's Nutrition will work anywhere. It will, because of the way we train our staff. Our business model, it will work anywhere. So it just depends on the guy or gal running how the many, business. How many people are actually in your company right now? If you include um, if you include franchisees, their employees, and our employees, there's about 75 people who are employed, the 80 people employed through Rexy Nutrition Stores. Um, that grows every month as we're opening another location here in Omaha. I just uh, set the lease off today. We'll be, opening, we'll be opening. We will be opening. We will be opening in Exarvin Village, uh, right? Yeah, right between uh, the Mai Tai Restaurant and uh, Voodoo Taco, right there in you the hot Taco spot. Yeah, everybody knows how busy it is. <laughs> right by UNO dorms, or right behind us. You got the Exarvin Theater. You got the Genesis Health Clubs. The the That's park. That's going to be excellent. Location. Oh, it's going to be location, awesome. Location, location, location. Well, you know, I got the opportunity a couple weeks ago to speak at a, the huge real estate conference here in town, and it was. Mm-hmm. Humbling because I got to speak with like the CEO of they had one of the head guys from uh, a famous footwear from Scooter's Coffee and I feel uh. kind of out of my league but <laughs> I had I just yeah, I, I winged it I winged it and uh, and a lot of these realtors kind of came after us honestly they're like we want you to take our spots that we have spots because we have a business model that's very stable 
Um, as far as a corporation, we are debt free, mm-hmm. which is very rare. That's um, very rare. It is. I'm just the way that I, uh, my business principles, the way I keep it, keeps me from doing anything that we can't afford because I don't have cash, I don't do it. I keep it very simple that way. That's um, nice. You know, and uh, so we're just a very stable business model. And with all these other companies closing doors everywhere, somebody's got to grow, and that's going to be us. That's going to be us. Well, we're the us best. Us. Well, yeah, it is us. <laughs> we're part of the family too. So, um, so yeah, it's 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 been it's been fun. It presents a lot of challenges when we grow this fast, but okay. You know, speaking of challenges, mm-hmm. what was your well? Two things. One, what was a personal challenge for you? Just you, Tim. Okay. And then a challenge for the company, and how did you overcome that for for people who are like, okay. This guy is doing this, and he's this, and he's that. Well, but you're also human. Yeah, well, you, you know, know um, it uh, with uh, business challenges for one. It, it's a lot of people, you know, they look, they have this vision, they believe in it, and then something goes wrong. And mm-hmm. people are too egotistical, in my opinion. People are like, no, I know what I'm doing. This is my way. It's my money. I'm doing this, and I've never taken that advantage. I think three heads are better than one. Five heads are better than two. Yeah. Uh, and so you'll find out. My staff will say the same thing: is that. I, I love this company so much that it's bigger than myself. And I understand that all these other people rely on me, including my franchisees, for, for a way to put uh, food on the table for their kids. That's how they get paid. So I, I'm not going to make any decisions without the approval of my core staff. So we have a core meeting every week. So even, I mean, these, these, some of these people are you know, very young in their 20s. It doesn't matter. I think they bring something to the table. Yeah. So all my store managers, especially in, in this area specifically, uh, that are around here. We all meet every Wednesday morning or Friday mornings, depending on the week, and we go over stuff. We we go over trainings. We go over how the business is going, ending, and then and I ask their opinions. You know, I uh, Merritt Downey, for instance. Merritt is uh, going to be my sister, my sister-in-law, fairly soon. So <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of awesome. And uh, so but she's worked for me for a year. She started out just working as a part-time sales associate in Norfolk to moving down here to kind of being a, an office assistant. To now she's the director of HR and marketing for a company that's in six states. Now, Merritt's only 28, but she's got a great mind for that aspect. So her, along with Nick Langer and Cody Guffey and Shane mm-hmm. Yeager, and they're all from different aspects and different areas. But I'm like, hey, I want to do this. And if they tell me no, granted, yes, I can do it anyways, but I don't. I say it's got to be a team vote. And if they argue against me, but I mean. They come, but they come to you with valid They do. They, they do. And, and I want to be challenged. So if I say, hey, I think this marketing trend's a good idea, and they say, no, that's, that's dumb. I have to go there and get my data and prove it. And so it really makes me fight for the things that are worth it. And it keeps me from spending money on something that's not. And we all kind of we, we all kind of come together and we have ideas. And that's, We're a family. We are a family, true and true. In fact, this last Saturday I had them all, all my employees. I had 40 or 50 of them at my house. Brittany and I, Brittany, I should say Brittany and I, Brittany definitely cooked the meal. I promised them I wouldn't cook. Um, and we just had them in the house just for uh, just fun and fellowship, you know, just to hang out just because it's a family. And, you know, I, it's it's... I keep in touch with every single staff, every single franchisee has, every their, all their employees have the ability to grab at me when they need me. And that's, that's, but it's been a challenge because, you know, it's, like our first month, it was bad. It was first four months were bad. And so we get into that, we opened August and December and I had to go meet with uh, investors who helped me with this company um, that first week of January 2011 and, and I was excited. Mm-hmm. And they're like, why are you excited? You, you, you've blown like at least $60,000. Just, just in operational expenses, much less all the money I had to spend to getting the store yeah. stock. And I said, well, Shane's my only employee, but he wants to be an investor. So he wants to buy in, we'll open another one. They're like, well, why would you do that? I go, because I found about 50 ways it didn't work, which means I'm this much closer to finding a way that it does work. And here's the deal. I touch up on that one. doubled our sales in January. Wow. I doubled our sales again from January's numbers into February, and I doubled it again in March. So within three months, after my first four months, we didn't go up at all to doing literally 400% more business by the time I hit April. Wow. So we were able to pay off and be in full in the black, even after opening the second store in May that year, so it was only seven months later, by that August, everybody's making money. Nice. And so, and all we did, Shane and I made a very good commitment. Until last year, Shane and I have never even raised our original salaries more than $100 in seven years. We kept every dime in the business, nice. because I, I'm willing to work like no one else is now, so later I can live like no one else can. Yep. And and I don't plan on taking any of this with me, so uh, you know I'm giving it all away. <laughs> I mean that's and that's that's also part of the faith and personal yes. challenges, which relate in business because when you're self-employed, your personal challenges and your personal issues are your business issues. You know, and yep. went through uh, you know I've gone through financial reversals and I, you know I've obviously gone from making a very good income, being a 100% commission salesman to you know, on a very low salary of, like, you know, <laughs> with a couple kids and, 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 and an ex-wife at the time who didn't work. And, uh, 
you know, getting the kids back in daycare, which is expensive, and all the other things that come with it, and uh, moving apartment to apartment, depending on what the deal was, because I didn't want to take anything out of the business to buy a house. So I just bought a house for the first time. Um, about five, four months ago. Nice. Oh, yeah. and just because I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not moving. I'll get a house. I got five kids. They all need to. I mean, when they're in the same bedrooms, they fight. So the best thing I can do to keep <laughs> quiet is uh, get a house. I hear and, you on that. But one. you know, it was just why? Because I didn't want anything to hold me down that could keep me from putting everything into the business. And you know, I went through a divorce, um, which was very hard uh, personally, obviously, in the company. As I, you know, I had to find a new church, and I did, and I found a great church at Stonebridge. And, yes, you know, oh, yeah, Stonebridge, you know, uh, <laughs> and it's, you know, it's really home, and we we uh, we volunteer like three to four days a week, and we See, love it. Yeah. I, I touched up on that. I didn't. I actually okay. said that where we went. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm gonna take that out because I don't know if he wants to say that. <laughs> oh no, it didn't bother me a bit, and you know, <laughs> it's a, it's a very huge part of uh, who I am, yeah. and you know, that's. It, my employees have asked me before, like, how are you successful? I'm like, honestly, it's, it's by the grace of God. I just use the talents he's given me, and uh, yeah. I will work harder than anyone else because I've been given this a chance and this opportunity um, to, to use my talents, and I'm going to use it to 100%. And, you know, that's, you know, when I, obviously the personal challenges, uh, you know, go through divorce is hard on the family. It's hard to kids hard to you emotionally, but obviously, obviously what Nebraska. Can be done? Well, honestly, because I knew what this thing can do. Um, you know, we had been. How did you know? My faith, my faith, and then I, I met somebody who okay. changed everything. I met my wife Brittany, my now wife Brittany, um, who is she's a fighter. I mean, she's uh, yes, she's she, the, is. she is absolutely the best part of me, and she just is like she would and when I would feel down, she'd be like, "Are you kidding me? Like you've got like this chance in in your and she would just she's my cheerleader. Everybody needs a cheerleader. Yep. Because everybody gets down, and she, she and she would and she you know she calls me on it. She's like, oh, shut up and get moving. <laughs> okay, you know, and then and, and, and you, and you There's do. There's people like that that you need in your life, like you like you and I were talking just a second yeah. ago. Tell me, don't sugarcoat it. Tell me straight. Just, just that way me. I know. Well, it's I like mean, I just had my I was telling her, you know, I had my daughter. She's 18. Oh gosh, she's and so sweet. I know oh, she, she's cakes. the best. Oh my gosh, she's she, she makes great cakes, cakes which is great for bodybuilders because cheat days are legendary. Yes. Um, but you know, she she wants to get into her own business too, and she's she's great in the marketing aspect and social media, which we've gone to really uh, divulge a hundred percent into. And I said, fine, uh, go ahead and grade me. I'll see what you got to do. You know, so she did. She came back two days later with three pages. Uh, she gave me an F on our Twitter. Um, yeah, she, she gave she, me an F on what? My Twitter, my Twitter account. Oh. She goes, your Twitter is horrible. So we've made a dedicated thing. Okay, we're changing this. I had to get a Twitter. I never had one. So she's telling me, and when yeah. you take better shots, all these things. Yes. I'm like, you know, I love the fact that my daughter held nothing back. I'm like, give it to me. Because I'm not going to be egotistical. So it goes back to thinking bigger than yourself. I said, yeah. okay. I could say, hey, look at my resume. I'm obviously accomplished. But no, I took all of her suggestions, went to our core meeting of managers. I'm like, look what my daughter did. <laughs> and two, what do we all want to do to fix everything on this list? And so I'm not beyond taking the advice of an 18-year-old um, or, or, or a 50-year-old. It doesn't matter. I'm, whoever can bring their best A game at the table is going to help us and what's what we're going to do. That is one thing I really do love about, one, your perspective and your attitude on it is because you, you see the bigger picture. You see that everyone out there, as far as your demographic is concerned, that's your demographic from yeah. 18 on up oh, it doesn't to matter. 80. Oh, it doesn't matter. So you need that input from everyone. I do because everyone's a customer. You know, that's yep. it's, and that's why it's been Rexius Nutrition. It wasn't, it, it, regardless of what my wife may tell you, it's, <laughs> it, it was not an egotistical. We'll it was not. It was not an <laughs> egotistical move. Um, she always jokes around you know, like that. I'm very humble. Um, but uh, you know, you, we, we, we she knows the mission too. The thing is, we wanted you know the, the old car dealerships when you were a kid. You know, Miller Automotive or this. And you went there because you knew Miller. Yeah. You knew that you could trust. I mean, especially like an after like. You can trust that guy is going to take care of you. So I wanted to put a name on the door. Like, this is who's responsible, not some big corporate thing that, you know, where everybody wears the same red polo when they go to work kind of stuff. I wanted to keep it real personable. And this is the guy behind the business. Because the fact is, I want customers for a lifetime. I don't want to fly by night. This is not a multi-level scheme. I'm not trying to talk you into being a reseller. This is just, I want you to come in so much that you love it. You bring in your brother. And he brings in his kids. You bring in your grandpa because this is the place to go. And we literally have... You know, three generations of people are shopping here. I got the guy, I got his dad, and I got his kids all shopping here because then that that's the beautiful thing. They know who to send them to. Yeah. And then my staff, that's why, you know, I take care of such good care of my staff because they're the ones building these relationships all the time. Yeah, and with people. And with I mean, people. that's, that, for yeah. me, that's, I mean, hello, I do. I, I have all this. <laughs> and like I said, I told you earlier, yeah. I, 
I only have one shirt. Yeah, well, we're working on the shirt. We'll get you some shirts because I, 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 that's my whole closet. Um, I don't even think I own anything else. And if I do get some of a present, I have Rexy's logo on it within a week. So, um, but that, you know, that's and that's that's the thing is my kids. My kids wore the Rexy stuff. And yeah. It's, it's just a very yeah. we're very proud of what we've accomplished, and I think we're more excited about what the future holds. Like 2018 yeah. is especially going to be our year in 2019, and we're going to go from five states. I think by the end of 2019, I want to be in ten. Ten states, nice. um, and, that, and that's the goal. And it's, it's a lofty goal. And so, in fact, is I, I said this: if we don't have a franchisee ready, Rexy's Nutrition Corporate's expanding. So, if I don't find somebody for the Des Moines area, I've got a bay built out. It's beautiful. It's there. It. Um, I can't divulge a lot more than that about why it's there and whatnot. But I can tell you right now that if I don't have a franchisee within the next six months, Rex Nutrition over there. If I don't have one for Sioux Falls because uh-huh. we're sponsoring uh, Jack the Tones, uh, Sioux Falls show up there in May. Okay. Um, if I don't have one up by then, we're opening. That's just how it's because it, it's the good. It's the great time to get into it. You know, I've seen some of my franchisees open in two, three, four locations, and they're they're under the age of thirty, and they did That's not awesome. and they did not come for money or anything. They're just two good, hardworking guys that know how to hustle, and they have four businesses they have a dream. within two years. Uh, I mean, twenty eight years old. I mean. That, that's why I did it. Seeing those guys do what I couldn't do at 23, that's why I did this. And that's why. Because I wished I had had an opportunity that wasn't going to break the bank. And so. this is exactly why I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. It's because people out there, they, some, some, of them, some of you guys, me included, <laughs> you don't know what questions to ask, who to ask. Um, you're too afraid to ask. Yeah. And it, you need that out there. And that's why I'm, I'm doing this, the, my site, Cindy Little School Things, but also BS No Excuse. Because... BS can stand for a couple things. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> Be strong. Yeah. And then the other one, BS. Yeah. But there's always an excuse for somebody. Well, there is. And, and, and that was. And it could be valid, but you have to go past that. And you've got to find a way to hustle it. Yes. One way or the other. I don't care if it's in business or if it's in bodybuilding. So I love about yeah. nutrition. And so I was able to figure it out in business. Yeah, I had to go six ways to Sunday to make this thing start. Mm-hmm. And I don't care what it is. I don't care how big it is either. I have a gal in North Carolina who's trying to fundraise. Because she found us, she said, she thinks it was through her faith. She found us. We talked information. Cody Guffey, who's the uh, assistant director of franchising for me, he got on the phone with her. He goes, you've got to talk to this lady. I'm like, okay, cool. So we set up an appointment, talked to her on the phone um, with, with Cody and Nick. And, and I'm like, I go, I don't like her. You know, I'm going to make <laughs> sure she finds a way. She's looking a way to get a store. She's a, a single mom, and she was a... She, she's a survivor. She just fights. I'm like, I go, you got to be part of this. I mean, you've got to be part of this. We start talking about faith and just, you know, um, and it's just fun like that because that's that's the whole point. Like, find a way to hustle. I don't care which way. There's a way to make something happen. And, and same with, like, health and nutrition. I mean, I think it was last year I got these, tech, these messages and direct messages being like, you really think you can get rid of 36? I go, at 36 last year, I won uh, my class in a bodybuilding show. Yeah, he can. He Wait, did. I, I went from 330 <laughs> pounds to last year I was on stage at 4 or 5% body fat at 223 pounds in the best shape of my life. I look better than I did at 26 or 16. I have five kids. I work 80 hours a week. But if you want to make it happen, you will find you a way. I just, everybody else asks me, what's your favorite TV show? I don't watch it. You know, I, I don't I'm have the, same the 45 lady. minutes you're watching that episode of Grey's Anatomy or whatever. I'm in the gym throwing heavy stuff around um, because it, it relaxes me, for one. And two, I get healthier. And it doesn't have to be hard. I mean, it, yeah. I don't, at, at 36, I got a rule is that I, if it hurts, I don't do it. I don't want it. So, uh, <laughs> I don't do a lot of cardio because I don't want it. Uh, I, I'd rather I'd rather twist my ankle up to the on my way up to the stair mill than actually get See, on it. Uh, Nick, Nick has he I I'll publicly apologize right now. I'm sorry, Nick. He that bless his heart. I love him and Danny to death. Um, just like you guys, you guys are just amazing people. I just you. I do I love you guys to death. You're always so sweet. It's very down to earth, and that's one huge thing I do want to say is you're down to earth. So yeah. thank you, but. Nick, bless his heart, amazing trainer. Um, but for me, it's my I have health issues, and I know yeah. that is a reason. That's a that's an excuse. But it seems like every single time I start saying I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna get yeah. this done, I'm gonna do this, and I start training with Nick, it's just like my health, my body. And I just I just found out really that my doctors pretty much told me, as far as competitions and bodybuilding yeah. is concerned. I can't hit it hard. Well, and that's my and, body's like, and, yeah. and that's what happened last year. And I mean, just to top it off, I didn't just train to do this show last year. Um, I had already gone through a prep. I was severely overtrained, um, probably in how nursed. I had major health issues. Yeah, um, I had a reverse we diet. I had, you know, I I know metabolic damage is one of those things I think is overdone, but I legitimately had it. And so I started back over. I gained like forty pounds, and so I started at two seventy five. 
Nick started with me in the end of August um, of the previous year, 2016. And uh, we started cutting me down. And he goes, God, you can't, I couldn't do cardio. I literally couldn't do cardio, guys. I was not unhappy about that at all. <laughs> I hate cardio. You can ask Nick. I would do 20 minutes. I gained four pounds. And we found what? out why. Why? Um, uh, my thyroid was completely unfunctional. Like, I had wow. overtrained so bad that my thyroid had completely given out. Like, so the, my levels were off. Yeah, I had, no. It was really bad. So they put me on some Synthroid to help me start. And it took about nine months for it to heal. But so in the process, we had met uh, Joe Bentley, who's going to be here this next week. Or this week. This Thursday, Joe will be here. We're going to do, uh, on a Rex Nutrition, actually, we're going to do a podcast. Um, awesome. Where he gets a question and answer. Joe is kind of the, uh, he calls him the, the keto wanker. He's from the UK. He's the president CEO of uh, Project AD. I should have, oh, here. One of Joe's products. Awesome. Okay, um, so we met Joe, and Joe's talking to Nick, and Joe's one of the best, um, I think, dietitians anywhere. And, and so and he does the keto diet. He does the keto diet. So he goes, you should go to keto. So him and Joe partnered up together, and then they helped me because Nick had never, and that's the thing about Nick, it makes him so smart. He wasn't too egotistical, the same as we do with Rexius. Yes. This is why Nick's such a huge part of Rexius as well, because Nick's not, he goes, okay, listen, I need help. He didn't yes. get like an ego. He's like, so he got to Joe, and they got me. Last month, I didn't do any cardio. I dropped from 235 to 223. I got leaner and leaner and leaner until all of a sudden, my metabolism got so high the last three days, they had to start mm-hmm. feeding me carbs, and I didn't have carbs in too much, and my metabolism just kept going up. Wow. And, and, it's, and it's because we found a way to get around it. Now, now we've healed my thyroid. Nick says I can do cardio now, which I'm not going to, Nick. Right. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's just not going to happen. Um, you know, but it's, uh, it, it's just one of those things. Like, you're going to get thrown curveballs. It doesn't matter. It's not always going to work out. You're going to have injuries. You, you know, when you're training, you're going to – my daughters uh, dance twice a week, and we have soccer, and I have – you know, little one's going to play flag football. Then my 12-year-old is starting to train, which is – when you have a kid that starts to work out for the first time, best part ever. I have an 18-year-old, and – She's got a boyfriend. That's a full-time job. And, yeah, uh, you know, I got to watch that. Yeah. And uh, he's a good kid. I like him. He works for us, actually. Um, yeah, but, you know, <laughs> and, then, and my wife and I, we, we started a gym. We have all the stores. And, uh, you know, it's just it's one thing. Iron Haven, but, by the way. Iron Heaven. Uh, me and uh, Brit- Brittany and I and Nick and Danny Langer uh, started the gym yep. together. And, you know, it, it's just, and that's why we did it. Because I wanted a gym that you could go and get good advice from folks that isn't playing top 40s easy listening music. That you can oh, throw heavyweights around. <laughs> Yes. Make some noise, drop some weights. You don't have to worry about chalk. what you're wearing. You don't worry about what you're wearing. It isn't, you know, you don't have to worry about somebody, you know, people understand gym etiquette. And yes. It just kind of tied into it, and it was fun. But, you know, that's, and everybody else is, it just ties into this industry. And it, um, but, you know, I, that's one thing. Being in this job makes me hold myself accountable to being healthy. Okay, so a lot of people, success to a lot of people means different things. Yeah. For me, and you know, it changes as you get older. Oh, sure. But for me, and, and mind you, I mean, my oldest will be 24 this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but to me, when I was younger, the only thing that I ever wanted to be in life was a wife and a mom. Mm-hmm. That's it. Now, it, no, it is so much more. Now it's I'm getting back to. Who Cindy is, you oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's, and it's, what is success for you? <sighs> Look, I mean, I could care less about the money I make. I really, I really could. I mean, <laughs> Brittany and I said the same thing. If we, as long as we're together as a family, living in a van down by the river, we're good. We're good. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I got a, a nice house, but I didn't, you know, I don't break the bank with anything. I don't care what kind of car I drive, and it's about the legacy I'm leaving. And that's, and I don't, I could care less about the money. It's I care all about the legacy. So yeah, we give away all this advice for free. And we're doing all these YouTubes, and we're doing all this stuff. Well, this is for free. And why are we doing it? Because I'm caring about the content I'm throwing out. I'm caring about like who I can affect, who can I inspire. And I told my managers last week on our Wednesday meeting before we had our big day on Friday, and then we did the big sale, and I had everybody get on. I go, everybody's on social media today. I said, you underestimate the ability you have to inspire people. Your staff, your employees, your customers, you may be that person that day that, that actually changes that person's life. You know, yes. Alexis Williams that works for us, and great hire helps run her downtown location she's the same thing she had one in her car day maker and I asked her what that meant she goes and she told me a story about how her former boss had saved someone's life uh, just because he talked to her and and she wrote him a letter later that said you had saved my life just because that day you have the ability to just inspire people yeah. and you know and I don't care if it's to get healthy I don't care if it's to start a business I don't care if it's to you know work on the relationship with you know or to, to go to church whatever it would be um, you have the ability to inspire people every day so it's I could complain about 
is something going on. It happens all the time. You know, yeah. my daughter, Life happens. my daughter's oil lights on for six weeks. It doesn't tell me. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not happy. You know, um, she gets stuck in you the know, car she, wash. she calls, she gets stuck in the car wash. She called me once and said that the lights won't turn off. I'm like, the car's beeping. I'm like, your interior lights are on. You can't even turn those on without the car being on. I go, uh, there's a switch to your left. Click. Okay. But, you know, it's just, <laughs> sorry, honey, I got I to bust you out. But, you know, she, but it's, you know, we always have a reason we could be upset or whatever, you know, but mm -hmm. you know, my daughter, she's just one of the greatest blessings that ever happened to me is getting to adopt Alexis. And, you know, it's uh, mm -hmm. that's why her last name is Rexius now. And, uh, you know, it's one of the greatest things ever. Congratulations. But, thank you. And, you know, but we have the ability to inspire people every day. And, if, and that's what we're challenged to do. I mean, Brittany and I are heading on Friday with Alexis, our oldest, for five days to Mexico. Yes. The mission trip for Stonebridge Church, and we're in the high school house, and we're going to build three houses. I took houses. that off, too, because I didn't, I didn't know if you wanted I, to I am 100% me all the time. You don't like it, you don't have to watch it. Um, exactly. You know, but we're going down to Mexico, and we decided that we're going to get back. We're going to build three houses uh, for some f folks down there. And uh, and, and like the church told me, like, getting to see people finally get a house is, like, the coolest thing ever. And, that's Brittany and I's honeymoon, actually. We aren't going to, we're not going someplace to land the beach. We're going to sleep in tents in the middle of the desert. Mark said that. Uh, with uh, no uh, no running showers and no running bathroom uh, to build houses for five days. And you know what? Because the simple fact is, the next year I'm taking my 12-year-olds and my 10-year-old, um, just the fact is that, you know, people realize they get loose perspective. They start yes. thinking their problems are so big. And our problems are nothing. There are people, yeah. we have it so good, especially in the United States. Yeah. We have it so phenomenally good. But I think it's, yeah. People have a deep chance to, people get complacent. People get uh, dissatisfied with their lives mm -hmm. and they look for things to blame. But you have a roof over your head, you got food on the table, and you got your health. I mean, you've got, you got, you've got everything. You've got, so, I, I mean, that's, I, for so me, that's, I mean, I'm like yeah. with you, like in a third world country, I was born in the Philippine Island, Cody. <laughs> Cody's walking Cody's around. dancing around. <laughs> um, but, but I was in the, I was born in a third world country, in mm -hmm. the Philippine Islands. I weighed two pounds, nine ounces. Oh, man. And my mom literally told me that all they did was wrap me up. They put me aside. And she asked them, don't you clean your babies? <laughs> well, my mom is country. I mean, yeah. she grew up in yeah. Missouri. She's yeah. 70, <clears throat> 70 years old. My mom. <laughs> 75. You go, girl. Yeah. But, um, but, and she told me, you know, that, that they just, they were, they literally, the doctor told her, it's, more it's more humane to let her expire because over there they did not have the, the equipment yeah. to sustain my life it was going to be too costly yeah and so for me i mean i was see my biological mother was seven months pregnant when she had me oh. and i found out that she actually oh wow okay i haven't said this apart about me <laughs> but um uh she tried to abort me and that's why I came early. Mm. And to wow. me, when I look at, at at people out there who, you know, and yes, there are always somebody out there who is who's worse off. Like these people who are on the side, standing outside of the road. Oh, yeah. Yes, I know. I know they could just be out there, you know, getting paid and stuff like that. But to me, I look at it as that could be Jesus. But, you and know, and I, I, mean, look, I look at it differently. Yeah, I mean... Uh, the same thing. I mean, I mean, I look at it in the same aspect. I mean, if there's somebody on the side of the street, and that somebody's got it worse than me, mm -hmm. whether they're faking it or not, if they're actually doing that, mm -hmm. whether they are homeless or they're not. So they say they're not, and they're actually doing it. I look at it this way. That's somebody that needs to be inspired. It's yes. a, I don't care why they're there. Yes. It's somebody that needs to be inspired, somebody that needs help. Now, maybe it really truly is financial, and maybe it's spiritual. Maybe it's just motivational. But that's yes. still somebody. If they're on the corner, whether they're lying or not, there's somebody that needs mm -hmm. help. And so I'll stop anyways. Yeah. It ain't always gonna be, it ain't always gonna be money because I ain't got it. My I have three daughters. Okay, if I have cash, trust me, they <laughs> jacked it well before I leave the house. But you know, it can be this. I passed out bottles of water. I, I, yes. We had a little mini Bible before. I high fives and say, man, I ain't got nothing for you, but high five. They're, 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 every time they're yeah. like, cool. And you know, it's yeah. it's it's one of those that you know you can like I said, you can be somebody's daymaker. I was late for a job interview because I stopped and they gave my lunch. <laughs> to yeah. Guys. yeah. Well, that's just it. You know, it's, it's like we have all these extra Rexy shirts that, that were too big, the really, really old ones. So I'm, like, I'm taking them down to the homeless shelter. I mean, why yes. not? I mean, and, and if I got extra bars, I got extra stuff, we, that's what we do. And it's, See, that's my, yeah. my Bible uh, Bible study. They um, on, we meet on Tuesdays, every mm -hmm. Tuesday. And that's what we do. We go down to, um, oh, heavens to Betsy, I can't remember the name right now. 
but it's downtown, and at the end of the month, we go and we bring actual meal for them. Oh, yeah. This last month, um, Abraham Catering, I um, bartend for them mm -hmm. every once in a while, and we had our Christmas party, and I asked them, hey, can I take some of this food? Oh, my gosh, Tim, I, a bag full, oh, I'm yeah. not kidding you, of enchiladas. They gave me this huge block of oh, yeah. cheese to go down there with it. And I'm just like, it made me cry. Oh, and that's, and that's you know, I swear, like, <laughs> pretty much, you donate to everything? Like, if I can, I do. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's uh, it's um, just, I don't know. I don't. I mean, yeah, does it make me feel good? Sure, but I mean, it's, it's blessing somebody else, and if that's the case, you know, that's I've, I've been there. Yeah. I mean, I'm, and it's, uh, so honestly, the greatest thing that my parents ever did for me was kind of, was cutting me off after, right after high school. It's like, hey, you're on your own. And I sink or swim. God, God, so God love them. You know, I've been times where I was so broke. I mean, I'm talking broke, broke. Mm -hmm. That uh, we didn't have any hot water in college, so we had to go down to the rec center to shower, take our dishes down there and wash them. I kid you not. I, I can't make this stuff. I mean, Tony, my, my best friend Tony and I at the college, got so broke that we actually took ketchup packets we stole from McDonald's, <laughs> made hot water, and made tomato soup out of it. Because that's, <laughs> I was broke on the gas station still and toilet paper. So I, I've been there. And yeah. so if I can if I can change somebody else's life and make it better, I mean that's uh, then absolutely you know I mean, it's I've had same on the staff that and one didn't have a car I'm like let's go find you a car you know and then when they broke down let's let's call somebody and get those tires like I mean that's just why well, buy the ability and, and like I remember last year that we had somebody a friend of ours needed somebody to get a bus ticket to go home to Texas somebody I knew and I called Brittany I'm like hey I know we just got some money back um, from the house I'm like would you mind if we spent you know hundred and some bucks send this get a bus ticket she's like sure. That's why she's my wife, because she's because if I'm even if I'm sitting up that she's like we're doing this. Well, okay, sweet, you know, and it's it's just if you can do something to help pay it forward, then that's what you need to do. And this, it's people like you, and I say people like him are the ones that keep me in check. That's why I'm doing this, not only for for you guys, but for myself, because oh. seeing you, seeing what you do for people just inspires me even more to do that myself. You know, and, it, and it's and it's it's one of those, like, I've, I've had, I mean, I yeah, I've had struggles, but, I mean, I've gotten so blessed. I got, you know, I, I got my mom and my stepdad, and then I've got my dad and my stepmom. Like, mm -hmm. I've got, I mean, I got friends of mine who have one parent, and, and like, I mean, I got four that are awesome, you know? My mom and my stepdad have been there, my dad and my stepmom. I've got a lot of great lessons on, on all sorts of aspects. I'm just, I always feel like, I, yeah, yeah, there's some things that are bad, but I, the good definitely outweighs it. And, yeah. You know, we go, and I get challenged all the time with my kids. I mean, my son, I mean, standing up for a kid that was getting made fun of, even though he, he was about to get whooped. I'm like, I mean, how many grown men would, wouldn't, wouldn't do that? People want to think they, they would, wouldn't. but actually push comes to shove. And so he, he put me in check. I'm like, whoa, look at this. You know, I mean, that's, that's yes. just, it's humbling. And, and just watching what my kids want to do, like they, I mean, wanting to, you know, go down and help us at the Open Door Mission to, to pack boxes. They're all, and it wasn't a no from any of them. There was, I mean, yeah, there was, can we get ice cream afterwards? But, well, you know, it's cool, you know, that's, you know, that's kids. But they're all, they're all in. And then every time to me, like, God, you know, and then Brittany, this time, we, you know, just so you guys know, like, we, we go and help out with youth group on Wednesday nights. And then Brittany mm -hmm. helps do a uh, middle school small group. And then we have the high school small groups at our house on Sundays. And then I do security at church at 7 o'clock in the mornings. And we all share at 11. So we're, we're busy. And plus, having 16 businesses, it keeps us busy. Brittany's like, we need to join a small group for church. No, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm like, I am so busy. She, she goes, well, if you're not busy enough time to get back to your faith, like once every other week, I go, oh, that's cheap. <laughs> All right, sign me up. So now we're in a small group every other Thursday. And, um, you know, but it's just, it's one of those things that's always people around to hold you though. accountable. I yes. love it. I loved it. And, you know, it's like, that's why my staff, I mean, that's why we're always there. Because everybody, somebody's always going to be down. Somebody's always going to be off their game. But then you have the people around you, your core people, to keep you in check. Yes. Keep you saying, like, what are you doing? You know, that that's, you keep yeah. having people hold you accountable is really where it's at. And so I told the staff yeah. last week, I'm like, hold them accountable. They need to hold me accountable. And it's the same thing. So I told them, while I get back from Mexico, I got to get back on the diet because I've been... Uh, uh, happy Slacking. honeymoon, marriage, eating. You know, my yeah. wife's a phenomenal cook, and uh, I, I don't want to hurt her feelings, so I eat all the food. Sorry, Brittany. Um, and uh, so, <laughs> but I, I got to get back on. I got to get back on track because I'm. You know, it it's happens to all of us. It, oh, we yeah. we get busy and we end up eating the food that you probably shouldn't. And mm, you figured you no. already had two. You already had two cookies, so why not a whole box of Girl Scout cookies? Because it is the season. I and uh, that's I, what I, happened I, yesterday. I, I, so. I do have to apologize to my to my husband because um, I bought. From, from my neighbors, um, I bought 
two Thin Mint boxes and then one Caramel it, Delights. You're, you're, but, you know, you're helping out the Girl Scouts. Yeah, so, I mean, it was a good, it's for a good cause. And a good thing I did for him is I, I took off, like, a little crumb of the Caramel because he loves Caramel Delights. Oh, yeah. And I said, just eat one. And I literally took them and, and yeah. I gave it to our kids. Oh, you have to. You have to. It's just, it's. I told Brandon, stuff's got to disappear when we go home. Like, it's got to go. Um, but, you know, with five kids, we're walking around eating them. They're 18, oh. 12, 12, 10, and 5. And they all keep me to have snacks everywhere. And that's just to keep them. Because we're, we're on the go. And uh, But so it's just disappointing. And, um, I go up and down like anybody else does, you know. But it, it just amazes me. Like, um, like, Z and I were talking. Um, speak, do you know how to pronounce his name? Zedenic. Yes! Yes. We're educated. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that, that's what Maggie said. Uh -huh. They pronounce your name. They're educated. I'm talking to it. But anyway, that's what I mean. That's that's kind of what what we were talking about. But I mean, like I said, for me, you just taking the time. I mean, to just sit here and talk with me. Yeah. I mean, I'm nobody. You know, I'm well, just. Yeah, but no, you're you're good people. You and your husband. I love you guys. I love you guys. You know, and <laughs> and it's 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 uh it's one of those that if, if this video we make and we put on YouTube and, and you do that if it inspires even just one person it's yes. worth it it's yes. absolutely so it's I mean I've had thumbs downs on my YouTube videos and then one person thumbs up like hey man that changed it mm -hmm. that changed the game that day I'm like that's yep. totally fine I don't care yep. if I you know how much time it is and people it's, are out there they're gonna have their opinions about certain things and I mean I even actually had somebody tell me um, and bless their heart, they they've met me twice and they're like I don't know I, 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 I know you you know you shouldn't I don't think you should be doing stuff like that. And I'm thinking, you've met me twice. Yeah, yeah. You don't you know, hear my story, though. But I didn't say anything. I'm just like, okay. Well, you can even, you can make an <laughs> innocent thing. You're going to have your naysayers. You can come from the Absolutely. closest, even the closest people in your life, you know. Yes. Uh, um, but you've got to stay true. And if you're doing it, if you're doing it, and I always feel this way. Like I'm, I'm very much a Christian. I'm very much in my faith. So yeah. I always feel if I'm doing it for the glory of God, I'll be fine. Yes. Thank you. That's it. I'll be fine. I'll figure yes. it out. You know, and if I learn, you know, if, if I if I fail at something, well, you know, then I got taught one way it didn't work. I see, but that's the way that that's the one thing I was going to touch on earlier is failure. Mm -hmm. You looked at I look at failure as I I don't like using that word. Yeah. The word I like to use is an opportunity. Yeah, that's it. It's an opportunity because I, I I didn't it didn't work this way. That's not a failure. A failure is when you completely quit. Oh yeah, that's a failure. Too. Oh yeah, that's and that's it. And quitting's not an option. And the fact that you said I just found, you know, fifty ways of doing it, and not being right on it. <laughs> well, I think you can ask my you can ask my my, my kids. We use the expression like, I'm like Rex says, do uh, don't do what they go. We don't whine, we don't quit, we don't give up. That's just it. Because quitting and giving up are two different things. You can yeah. you just quit something and give up. I mean, it was it was don't whine, don't cry, don't quit. That's what it was. Okay. Don't whine, don't quit, and give up. I mean, that's the, giving up and don't let somebody else have the satisfaction. Yeah. Sorry. Right. I mean, because a lot of people want to see you quit. I mean, that's just how it is. And I'm not going to give you that. I'm not. And that's and that's sad because some people, you know, boost themselves up by seeing other people's failures. And I, and I think and I I I get the biggest high out of seeing someone else have success. Yes. I do. I do. And it, it's something that you know, Nick. Um, I just explained to him he went out to Mankato, Minnesota for me last week and yep, City, I saw that. got to work with the franchisees and you know he did the same trainings I had done for the staff here and they came back their first day after he trained them was the record breaking day by like 50 or 60 percent wow and I told him I go now you I mean you feel it and he's like yeah because now you get to see you get affecting to see all these other people you just inspired seven people to change the game and they did. And now I'm watching them on Instagram. I'm watching. I'm watching you guys on Instagram and Twitter. I'm loving it. I mean, I'm absolutely <laughs> loving it. And, and you know, and I'm, okay, Cody's gonna go out and do the same training with their staff too, because I want everybody to kind of feel that. Like it's, it's great having successes on your own, but helping other people have successes is so much a bigger high. It really is. That's why people coach. That's why people do, uh, you know, motivational speaking. That's why I do it. It's because I, I can pass it on to fifty other people. And that's, that's why I absolutely love you guys because you're not. It's not mine this is mine you like take it take it go run with it you know get your own oh absolutely you know what i'm saying yeah oh yeah i mean it's 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 Sorry, take, take it no no <laughs> take, <laughs> take it run with it and make it your own that's yes. that's it if i can help and i've had like i said my staff i told them all the same time like because i don't know if you're gonna do this forever i don't know if you want to start your own rexy store but you know you work for me and you work hard i will work for you so i've helped them i've helped them job interview prep for other mm -hmm. jobs, I, I've been, I, I told them all, if you don't list me as a reference after you work for me, I'm going to be upset. 
Um, Patrick Rock works for us, you know, in uh. different shops. Patrick's the greatest guy. <laughs> what up, P Rock? Um, also, he was he got a job at LinkedIn, and and I said, he nice. was, and I, yeah, it was awesome. Working there for a while, loves it. I have some other friends of mine. Uh, uh, Jeff works there, and, and I, I said, you put me as a reference. He goes, no. I go, well, he goes, well, I know. Like, I was mad. You can ask him. I chewed him. I'm like, dude, what? I mean, I'm well known. You know, I've been in the grand business, but I'm, I'm absolutely. He's like, I didn't know if you would. Of course I would. You've worked for me for like three, four years. Great guy. And I'm like, and so I told him, well, I'm like, if I can help you achieve or get anywhere, I will. Yep. And whether it's for me or somebody else, I've had people leave me to go run a bigger company in the same end. Like, go, man. Put me as a reference. I'll help you out. I can't. I mean, that's, it's, that's about passing it on, paying it forward. You know? And see, that's the difference between you have a boss, a manager, and then a leader. A leader. And, and, you can, and you can ask my staff. This has happened several times. I won't ask them to do anything I don't do. Brittany and I still pop in the shops, and we'll cover a Saturday shift. We'll cover a Sunday shift. We'll cover a Monday. I mean, it's like three weeks ago, their daughter was sick, so we went. We, uh, we both worked. Got at 5 in the morning and trained. Went to work at 7. Got the kids to school. Went to the gym at 4. Worked the gym 4 till 9.30 that night. I mean, it's a 19-hour day, but it's just what you do. Like, we'll yeah. jump in with anybody else. I think the simple fact, we're in there cleaning the toilets and changing out the toilet paper and the paper towels. <clears throat> and I've, I've had it happen before that, you know, I had a staff member call me once. Um, it was about three years ago at our Maple store and said, the toilet's clogged, there's some of these stuff's in there, it's disgusting, I'm not touching it. Okay, so I drove down there, plunged the toilet, and Clayton he goes, oh, I didn't mean that. I said, you've seen me do it, pay it for it and do it yourself. I mean, that's, I mean, he, goes, that's he goes, I never thought I'd see a CEO of a company come down and on a Saturday and plunge the toilet. I go, I'm not your normal CEO. So, um, and, and I mean, honestly, I hope that kid took that to heart and be like, you know, and I go, that's what leading is. Yes, because to me, a, co a, cor a corporation, a company, anything like that is, it's everybody. It's from the person who <laughs> plunges the toilet that makes the company work. Absolutely. Everybody. And that, absolutely. And that's, and that's, it's top and bottom. It's the weakest link in the chain and that's the whole thing. And it's, it's, you got to bring everybody up. Everybody's important. And that's yeah. just the way it looks. You know, we have one kid that's only worked for us for two shifts, three shifts, I think. Mm -hmm. Nice kid. And then he got sick. He's been in and out. He had the flu. And he went to the hospital uh, and stuff. And so yeah, the flu is my daughter made like a, 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 a you know, a, what they call a happy basket full of like cookies and stuff. And I'm, I've been texting him back and forth. He goes, I'm only worried for you a little bit, but I'm excited to come back. I'm like, you have home here. Like, this is just, this is, when you bring somebody in the family, you're part of the family no matter what. And, you know, and speaking of which, I already told you and Nick both, if you guys ever need anybody to Come, you guys, you guys, oh, unless he's got my number. I know Nick has my Nick, number. Nick, anyway, Brittany's got it. So I think Brittany has it. Yeah. Brittany, half the time my text messages from my phone are coming from my wife anyway, so <laughs> I mean, it, it might be in there. I don't know. She, she, I'm like, here, text this for me, because I have big hands. I do talk to text, and where I'm always driving, so she's always texting me anyway. <laughs> I do that, so. too. I talk to text her. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's been fun, and that's why I think I've had staff members of mine who have no real reason to work here who work for me one night a week, who work for me for six, seven years, just because they have fun doing it. And I yeah. asked them all last Saturday, they were at our house. I said, how many of you guys had fun yesterday working? And they're all like, it was a blast. I go, that's why I do this. Yeah. That's why it was one of the happiest days I've ever been as a CEO to hear all my staff members said it was a blast. I'm like, that's what I want. It shouldn't be work. Work is something you have to go do to get a check. Yeah, it's that you job. Mean, it's a job. This, this is making your passion your paycheck. Yes. That's what we have. It's making your passion your paycheck. Learn how to hustle. Get paid and do something that you love to do. Then you get to mm -hmm. help other people at the same time. It's a win, 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 win. And yep. that's what we've, I think that's what we've created here, and I think that's why we continue to grow. Exactly, so. exactly. And, um, well, I know it's getting yeah. close to your time, so you yeah. got to get going. Sorry. No, you're fine. Um, but no. I have a great time talking Absolutely. with you. Absolutely. Um, just real quick, where are your locations at? So they, All so right, I've they got, uh, go. like, say you're here in Omaha, at 120th the Center. I've got uh, one at 108th and Maple next to the Ice House. I've got one down at uh, 15th and Farm, new one downtown, 15th and Farm, 1517 Farm Street. One our 42nd, 370 in Bellevue, right by Sinful Burger. Check, check out the burgers, too. So if you buy weight loss bill Rexius, then you can go check the burger joint <laughs> out. Um, it works out really well. They uh, do have blockers. They, they do. <laughs> and and that's, so that's our two locations here. We're going to open a fifth location down in Exarbon Village here mm -hmm. relatively in the next month or so. Um, then we're in Columbus, Nebraska, Norfolk, Nebraska, Kearney, Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska, Grand Island, Nebraska. We're in Centennial, Colorado, outside Denver, uh, Mankato, Minnesota, uh, Mason City, Iowa, and Maryville, Missouri. Uh, with Dallas, Phoenix, um, and Fayetteville, uh, for sure, Sioux Falls, and Des Moines soon to come. Maybe Kansas City. We have a guy working on Kansas City right now. It's another Omaha boy who, uh, yes. I mean, she is cool. So I'm, I'm hoping that uh, he can make that happen because I think it would be awesome. And so that, that's where we're at right now. And, uh, you know, I hope, I want to see this thing go national. So I, Heck I yeah. If, if you're the right person with the right mentality to want to be part of the Rexy Church and family, holler at us. We will find a way to make it work. So. 
And you guys obviously know that they will back you. Yep. You know, you put your work into it, put your blood, sweat, and tears, they'll be right there with you. So just... Just to give you an idea, we did Denver, and I think Jared will tell you they're a franchisee out there, and I love Jared. Jared's an Omaha boy, too. Moved out back out to Colorado. He used to live there when he was a kid, and he'll tell you, I think we've been out there 12 times in two years. Wow. Well, I, we have five flown people out at least 12 times. I drove once. I'm too old to do the drive anymore. So after that, I flew. <laughs> Brittany and I have been out there four times ourselves. Just to go out there and help him do whatever, hang out with the staff, take him out to dinner. You know, and that's it. And we're actually going back out there in three weeks when we're back from Mexico to, to go over to mm -hmm. Colorado to help Jared um, mm -hmm. and help train staff. And then and that's the kind of support we give here. That's, it's, it's, if he's it's not successful, family. I'm not successful. He's part of the family, so that's yeah. what we do. But. Yeah, and then that is one thing, like, I personally can testify to is that, yeah, when they say it's a family, it, it is a family. Because, I mean, I know Nick and Danny personally. I help them. With their fence. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yes, the fence. I ran with the fence, yes. And um, just, like I said, just meeting you just the first time, it was just, I felt, and, and bring, I just felt so welcome. Oh, absolutely. And I just, I love it. So, guys, seriously, um, look into this. I will post all of their um, locations um, on uh, below. Make sure you guys subscribe. Um, give a thumbs up if you like what you like. If you like what you heard, and if you guys have any comments or questions, feel free to post them in the comment section, and then I can um, ask him questions about it, and then kind of go from there. But um, thank you again. That's good. I hey, appreciate thank you so much. it. Whatever. Oh, I'll hug it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. But anyway, thank you guys, Thanks, guys. for tuning appreciate in, it. and uh, again, see you later. Peace. Peace. <laughs>